On the night of the 7th of July 1941, 13,000 feet above the Dutch coast, a young 22-year-old New Zealand pilot faces an agonising dilemma. Through his side cockpit window, he can see the right-hand wing ablaze. He can bail out of his stricken Vickers Wellington bomber and take his chances with the Germans, or he can climb out onto the wing and put the fire out by hand. The decision he took that night made him the first New Zealander to be awarded the Victoria Cross for his outstanding bravery. This is the story of Sergeant James Allen Ward, VC. James was born and raised in New Zealand, in the river city of Wanganui, located on the west coast of the North Island. Born to English immigrant parents, he originally trained to be a teacher, having qualified in Wellington in 1939. However, world events would interrupt these plans. He was just about to embark on his teaching career after accepting a teaching position at Castlecliff School in Wanganui when World War II broke out. James wasted no time in enlisting with the Royal New Zealand Air Force, although he had to wait until July of 1940 before he could begin his military training. He began his flying training at the number one elementary flying training school at Royal New Zealand Air Force Tairi, before moving on to higher level training at Wigram Air Base in Christchurch. On the 18th of January 1941, James was awarded his wings when he qualified as a pilot and duly promoted to the rank of sergeant. War now beckoned for the young pilot, and within days he was aboard the troop ship the MV Eorangi, bound for England and the Royal Air Force. The RAF had selected Ward for heavy bomber duties, and so he was posted to number 20 operational training unit at RAF Lossiemouth in Scotland where after completing his training, he was posted to 75 Squadron at Aurea Feltwell in Norfolk, England. Prior to the outbreak of war, 75 Squadron was initially formed from mainly New Zealand air crews. They had been sent to England to take delivery of 30 Vickers Wellington bomber aircraft that had recently been bought by the New Zealand government. Originally formed at RAF Marham in Norfolk, they were busy preparing to fly the new bomber aircraft to New Zealand when war broke out. And following agreement between the British and New Zealand governments, it was decided that the squadron would remain in England as number 75 New Zealand Squadron, the first Commonwealth squadron of Bomber Command, and they moved their operations to nearby Aria Feltwell. Summer of 1941, and only some six months after qualifying as a pilot, Sergeant James Allen Ward arrives at his first operational squadron to serve as second pilot on board the Vickers Wellington bomber. The Vickers Wellington had entered RAF service in October of 1938 as a medium bomber, and was distinctive due to its geodetic basket weave-like structure covered in a treated stretched linen fabric. This meant it was light, but also very strong and resilient. His first mission took place on the night of June 16th, 1941. As second pilot to squadron leader Reuben Widowson, he was part of a 15 aircraft bombing raid over the German city of Dusseldorf, and despite heavy anti-aircraft fire and enemy searchlights, all 15 aircraft successfully dropped their bombs and incendiaries and safely returned to base, although one aircraft was attacked and damaged by a lone Junkers Ju-88 night fighter. The following few weeks saw Ward flying further raids over Brest, Kiel, Dusseldorf, Essen, and then on the 7th of July 1941, he joined his crew of Captain Squadron Leader Widowson, Navigator Sergeant Lawton, Wireless Operator Sergeant Mason, Forward Gunner Sergeant Evans, and Rear Gunner Sergeant Box for a 10 aircraft raid on Munster in Germany. The weather that evening was fine and clear, and the raid was a success. Flying through only light to medium anti-aircraft fire and searchlights, all but one of the aircraft successfully dropped their mixture of 1,000 pound bombs and incendiaries onto the target. The 10 Wellingtons now turned for home. They left German territory without a problem, but as Ward and his crew were crossing the Zuda Zee on the Dutch coast at 13,000 feet, a lone attacker swept up from beneath. A Luftwaffe Messerschmitt ME-110 had spotted them, and he opened up with a hail of fire. The ME-110 hit Ward's aircraft with cannon shells and incendiary bullets. But despite being hit in the foot, Rear Gunner Sergeant Box was able to release a burst of retaliatory fire which struck the ME-110 and sent it spinning out of control, plunging into the sea. The peril was only just beginning, however, because the damage inflicted by the ME-110 had caused a fire to break out close to the right-hand engine. The cannon fire had split a fuel pipe, and this leaking fuel had caught light, and the resultant fire was quickly taken hold. The entire linen-coated wing was now in danger of being totally consumed by fire. 
In a desperate attempt to bring the fire under control, the crew smashed a hole in the side of the fuselage and aimed fire extinguishers onto the wing, but with no success. They even tried using the coffee from their vacuum flasks, such was the desperation. Squadron leader Widowson, realising the imminent loss of the wing, prepared his crew to abandon the stricken Wellington. As a last resort, Ward came up with a bold and daring idea. He volunteered to climb out of the aircraft onto the wing and attempt to smother the fire from the gushing fuel pipe using an engine cover that had been being used as a cushion. Widowson agreed, and so Ward made for the access hatch in the roof of the aircraft fuselage. As the Wellington was flying at approximately 200 miles per hour, he realised that his parachute would increase his drag considerably when out in the airflow, and so he proposed to discard it. Widdowson and the crew disagreed and persuaded him to wear his chute, and instead, Widdowson would slow the aircraft down as much as possible so as to limit the effect of the airflow on Ward. A rope was tied to Ward and he clambered up and out of the hatch. Using a small axe as well as his feet, he broke holes in the linen fabric to make foot and hand holes, and with the help of the navigator, Sergeant Lawton, he managed to descend the three feet down the aircraft's side and onto the wing. Battling against the airflow, he somehow managed to traverse another three feet to the area behind the engine. The engine was still turning, and the extreme wind from it almost blew him from the wing. Incredibly, despite all of this, he managed to stuff the engine cover into the hole in the wing where the fuel was leaking from, and subdued the fire. But as soon as he removed his hand, the engine cover was blown away. But despite this, the fire had now been contained, and so now, thoroughly exhausted, he made his way back to the relative safety of the aircraft. Wellington bomber number L7818, now safe although badly damaged, carried the crew back to England and they made an emergency landing in Newmarket in Suffolk. The damage caused by the mission, as well as the emergency landing, meant this Wellington would not fly again. The crew made their way back to Aria Feltwell by road, and as they slept, the epic accounts of the night were being written up. The squadron record of events noted, the flight home had been made possible by the gallantry of Sergeant Ward in extinguishing the fire on the wing in circumstances of the greatest difficulty and at the risk of his life. Squadron Commander, Wing Commander Cyril Kay, in his official report under the heading of Awards Recommended, wrote, Squadron Leader Widowson, Distinguished Flying Cross. Sergeant Box, Distinguished Flying Medal. And under Sergeant Jimmy Ward, he wrote, Victoria Cross. Following the heroics of the 7th of July, Ward was given his own aircraft and crew to command, and on the 13th of September 1941, he joined 11 other Wellingtons for his first raid over Brest in occupied France. It went off without incident, however tragedy would strike just two days later. On the 15th of September, Ward was in a 12 aircraft raid over Hamburg. He had again successfully dropped his bomb load on target, and as he turned for home, his Wellington came under attack by a night fighter. On this occasion, however, the aircraft could not be saved. Wrestling to keep the aircraft level, he ordered his crew to bail out. Two of his crew managed to do just that, but despite his best efforts, the doomed Wellington crashed, with Ward and three of his crew still inside. His body was recovered from the wreckage along with his crew, and the Germans buried them in a civilian cemetery, although after the war, his remains were confirmed and reinterred in the Commonwealth War Graves Cemetery in Olsdorf, Hamburg. Tragically, due to him being awarded the Victoria Cross, the Air Ministry had recommended to the New Zealand government that he should be returned to New Zealand. It was agreed that his profile could aid propaganda and recruitment. He could also serve as an instructor with a home-based Royal New Zealand Air Force Squadron. This recommendation was approved on the 15th of September 1941, the day of the Hamburg Raid. In looking for a fitting tribute in which to end this video, I found this anecdote by Clifton Fadiman that I so hope is true. It reads, In the summer of 1941, Sergeant Ward was summoned to 10 Downing Street by Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The shy New Zealander was struck dumb with awe by the experience and was unable to answer the Prime Minister's questions. Churchill regarded the reluctant hero with some compassion. You must feel very humble and awkward in my presence, Churchill asked. Yes, sir, managed Ward. To which Churchill replied, Then you can imagine how humble and awkward I feel in yours. <laughs>